Hey folks, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a look at part two of our video series on the locks on folding knives. Today it is frame locks. Uh, the previous video was liner locks. If you've not seen that, click right up here right now. Go watch that first and then come watch this one on frame locks. Or if you're just not interested, just keep on watching this one. Although there is some very basic information in that previous video that might be helpful for you to watch first. Part three will be a quicker overview, not as in-depth on several other types of locking knives like back locks and access locks and that kind of thing. Not as in-depth as this one on light frame locks and the previous one that I did on liner locks. Grab yourself a snack, come back, sit down, watch this. It seems counterintuitive to me, but the frame lock was designed after the liner lock. But basically, uh, the liner lock knife is a frame lock with a liner on the outside. <laughs> and that's a liner lock. So a frame lock is very much like a liner lock. Here's this version. This is the most budget friendly. This is the in my opinion, the best bang for your buck. If you want a good frame lock at a low price, this is the knife to get. Uh, too bad they're not upgrading this one to uh, the FCF line of knives. This is the Ganzo G723M. And so what we've got here is a knife that's got a frame lock. So on this side, and this is the business side, the side that counts, there's nothing covering up this locking system. That's the frame lock. So here you can see how a liner lock works as well. This part of the steel is one piece with the rest and they make it thin enough. If the liners are very thin, they don't need to cut anything out. But on frame locks, usually the piece of steel on the side here is thick enough that they have to take some of the steel away so that they effectively turn that spot into a spring. And so they bend it and make it so that this piece of steel wants to go that way. And so that's the frame lock arm. And it works the same way in every other respect, like a liner lock. You've got a stop pin, you've got a pivot spot, and here's the liner or the frame lock arm. And as the blade is opening and getting close to being opened, it will go snap and slide over. And then it's engaged between the pin, the pivot, and the lock face, and everything's stiff and tight and nothing moves around. And that's a frame lock. Now, one of the reasons why I really like this is, notice the very thin cutout line they put here. They use a what they call wire EDM technology to cut this out. Most frame lock knives have, you know, significantly wider lines for the cutout. You know, here's a, a real steel knife, and that's a bigger cutout line. Um, here's a, I think this is a Y start, and it's a bigger line. I've seen a lot of knives that have even a much larger cut out between the frame lock liner, the frame lock arm and the frame. The big space in there for all kinds of junk and things to get into and cause issues. Or, you know, just sh are so showy that they show the mechanism very well. I like these high tolerances, the really fine lines that they have in there. Um, so that's how a frame lock works. Here's another one. It works the same way. The whole tang of the blade uh, the whole the whole frame moves over, or at least this whole frame arm moves over and engages with the blade. And uh, you know, you can see it there as well. That's a little dark. Uh, this one's really nice. This one on the show side, it's just G10. There's no steel on this side at all. It doesn't need it. And here's this really thick arm, and they have to cut out a lot of steel to turn that into a spring that's constantly pushing that way. And here's one by uh, Schrade. Same kind of deal, exactly the same thing. So all of these have a relief cut on them. There's a few that have the relief cut on the inside instead of on the outside. If you're using low quality steels, that can be a problem, but no, modern steels, it's not a problem at all if the cutout is up there. Some people will talk about the angles, how they meet, and it causes more stress and things, but 
No. Don't be concerned if it's a new knife, if the cutout is on the inside instead of on the outside like all of these. Now, what are some things to be concerned about? Well, the frame, the frame lock, if there's nothing else in the way, you can push it so far that you just push it all the way over and all the way out, and then it'll break right here. Uh, this knife happens to have this pocket clip in the way right here, uh, stopping it from going too far. But if you took this pocket clip off or put the pocket clip, I think, on the back here, it the frame lock arm is totally clear and you could push it out all the way and break it. Or at the very least, you might train that spring to want to be out and then it's a useless knife. And then if you try to push it back, like take it apart and try to train it to come back, by then you'll have fatigued this spot and it'll break there and your knife's a piece of garbage. So what do companies do to stop this problem from progressing? They can do something like this. This has got a stop insert. Uh, what do they call those things? An over travel stop. Uh, Rick Hinderer invented over travel stops. Um, by the way, Chris Reeve invented, you know, the frame lock arm. Arguably, he invented it. And then Rick Hinderer, who's also a very popular knife uh, designer. Both of those guys are in the United States. Uh, what this does is there's a disc here and it stops me from pushing it any further. I physically can't push it any further because it stops it right there. Now, this kind of stop can be up here um, or here. It should be within the forward half of between the uh, this relief cut and where the locks engage. You want it at least halfway or closer to the pivot. Some knives, what they do is they put the uh, pocket clip on the tip down orientation, especially a lot of San Remus have it. These and those are little knives. Actually, I'll go get one. And it has the uh, pocket clip come in the way and that stops you from opening it. I'll get one to show you. So here's an example of that. So the knife opens up, but this pocket clip right here, it comes out past where the frame lock is and it engages the frame lock right there. Mind you, you have to push it you know, quite far, but you know, it stops it from going any further and breaking. So that's a good idea. Anything that kind of stops it from happening, this knife is a new knife from Real Steel. I just reviewed it a little while ago. It has the same thing. It's got a pocket clip here that stops it from going too far. Once you start pushing too hard, you start flexing this spring too. So between this spring and this spring, it's a safety factor. So that's an over travel stop. Now, modern materials, you know, you might get a knife like this where you've got titanium. So these handle scales, or not scales, these, the handle part is made out of titanium. Now, titanium and steel don't like each other that much. And so when you've got a locking system where the titanium meets the blade of uh, stainless steel, uh, they come together and galling starts to happen on the titanium side, sometimes on the steel side as well. And that creates lock stick. And that means you're going to have a really hard time trying to disengage this lock. So you just won't be able to push it out. And then all of a sudden you'll have enough pressure and then snap, you'll push it really far. And so these two screws are because inside there, and I'll take one apart and show you a still picture. Those two screws hold a piece of steel that engages the lock arm. And so now you've got steel meeting steel instead of titanium meeting steel. And uh, that creates a really solid lockup. Now, what a lot of these modern titanium knives have, they not only have a lock bar insert, they add on a piece of steel that acts as an over travel stop as well. I don't know if you can see it on here. You can see that little bit of steel right there, just above my finger. And that's a piece of steel from that lock bar insert. And when you push the lock arm far enough, it stops. You can't push it any further because it hits a wall. There's other kinds of knives like this rake knife and rake has done this on several other knives. They've got 
a locking system as well. It works like a normal frame lock and you, you know, open it, it engages and everything. But when you go to push it out, if you have this lock pushed over, now you can't push that tang, this lock insert, not this lock arm, you just can't push it out of the way. And that creates a solid lockup that you can't accidentally disengage easily. You of course can accidentally disengage it, but you have to pull this back first. And there's a good detent on it. You can hear the snap. And uh, so if you like that kind of thing, look for knives that have that kind of thing. Uh, Rake is a really good budget brand that makes high quality knives at a decent price. And a lot of their frame locks have that system on it, if that's what you like. If you don't like it, but you like the knife design anyways, just leave it disengaged. I've never accidentally engaged this. It's just got, it's just made too well with nice high tolerances. And so then it just behaves like a regular frame lock knife, locks up nice and solid and works very, very well. Now, one thing to look for on both liner locks and frame lock knives is you're going to look for uh, the edge here that you're going to thumbs, you're going to look for the edge that your thumb engages and have one that's easy to get at, one where your thumb can, you know, bite into it well, well, not really bite into it, but, you know, engage it uh, with out any uh, feeling that, you know, it's not working or something or that it's going to slip or you're not quite going to make it. You know, so look for that. That's easy to disengage that frame lock or liner lock. And that's what you want. Now, there's a lot of knives, um, you know, that have like this one does. It's got some jimping on the side right there. That's those little cutout sections. Others, like this one, have got a smooth face there, but there's lots of steel exposed, easy to grab. And then you've got some cheap knives that really are just terrible, and you just can't get at them, especially on some liner locks. And so that's the thing to look for. So if you can test the knife first, um, it's one of the things you can't do when you buy online, and I buy almost all my knives online, so unfortunately you just can't get away from it. But Now there are three subcategories of frame locks that we're not going to cover. Uh, KAI, the people that make uh, Kershaw and Zero Tolerance knives, they've created a subframe lock. Uh, Lion Steel, they've created a thing called a roto block, and that's part of a lock. Uh, Chris Reeve, with his uh, Sabenza series of knives, Chris Reeve's knives, he's engaged a ceramic ball end lock piece. It's designed to help prevent lock stick. Uh, that's that thing with the titanium. So it's a system that uses a ceramic ball. So there's all kinds of variations on the theme. A lot of really smart guys, a lot of knife designers creating all kinds of fancy things. But you won't come across those things if you stick with budget knives. I haven't talked about the advantages of um, having a pocket clip being tipped down or a pocket clip being tipped up. I've got a totally separate video on that that I did almost two years ago now. So if you're wondering about pocket clip tip up, tip down as a side issue, um, look for that video. I'll put a link for it at the very end of this video. So the pros and cons, um, if it gets dirty in there, that's a con. It's going to create problems with this. So again, keep your knife clean. Another con that's inherent in frame locks is you sometimes get your fingers on the side of the frame lock. And is that a problem? Well, not normally, except for when you go to deploy the knife. If you've got fingers with any pressure on the frame lock, you're not going to be able to open it. You know, I can push on here. Oh, there, it just went barely. But if I'm pushing with my fingers on the side of the frame lock here, I can go try to deploy the blade all I want, and chances are very low that it's going to open unless I lower the pressure. So either left, right-handed or left-handed, it can be a problem. Uh, you know, right-handed, you've got your, usually your middle finger, sometimes other fingers, is pushing somewhere on the side of the frame lock. So if you're having difficulty opening your knife, if you're, it's really, really hard to do that, consider that factor. Maybe you've got a little bit of pressure on the frame lock there. You can even do it with the left hand, and then you've got your thumb that's often on it. If you're using a right-handed knife, uh, the thumb is often putting pressure on there, and then you just can't deploy the blade. 
Very common. It's one of the most common questions I get for frame lock knives when somebody gets their first frame lock or they get a new frame lock that's designed a little differently and they're not, they've never noticed that they put their fingers there and they think there's something wrong with the knife. Pros, this is a very solid locking system. It's a very strong locking system. Almost always, you know, the piece of steel that engages is so thick that there's absolutely no risk that it's going to go over so far that it's going to disengage. Uh, you know, it's just too thick of a piece of steel. So it's strong. It's very simple. There's fewer parts. And, uh, you know, it just works and it works very, very well. So that's frame locks. If you have any questions about frame locks, put them down in the comments below and uh, start it. Start your comment with frame lock question and then put your question in there. Also, if you want to engage me personally instead of just through the comment section, you can email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com. I answer all of my emails, maybe not the same day, maybe not the next day but I answer all of my emails within a couple days and uh, I do like to help you guys out. So if you've got questions, go ahead and ask them.